So we know that if we're going to be doing an outdoor portrait showing either a sunrise or a sunset, we know that we have to get a good exposure on the sky. And unless we're going to be doing the couple in a silhouette type of a pose, we have to get some light onto the couple or family or bride, whatever it is that you're doing. We have to get some light on them also. And in this particular case, we're talking about using flash. Now, during a sunrise or a sunset, it's no problem going up to a 250th of a second if we wanted to. However, what happens if you want to go above 250th of a second? Say, for instance, during the daytime hours, you have a real dramatic sky, but it's very bright out, and you want to capture some of that sky, and then you must put some light onto the subjects also. And then you realize that you have to go above 250th of a second. Now, in our case here, we're talking about using the Nikon D7200. Now, as long as you're going to be using a recent compatible flash, you can set your sync to go above 250th of a second, and here's how you do it. You go into the Custom Settings menu, down to Bracketing, Flash. You'll click on that, and then here you can see your speed. So we're going to take it up to where it says 1 320th of a second, and also says Auto FP. Click on that. And then now we can see it'll say flash sync speed 1 320th of a second. So now we set the flash sync speed to go above 250th of a second. And even though it says 1 320th of a second, guess what? We can go much faster. How fast can we go? We can actually go as fast as our camera model allows. And in this case, on the Nikon D7200, we can go up to one eight thousandth of a second. Now that's pretty amazing. And remember we have to use either our built-in flash or we can use a compatible flash that we mount onto the hot shoe. And in our demonstration here I was using the Nikon Speedlight SB800 which is compatible and of course you can mount that onto your hot shoe. Now you can also shoot TTL off camera. So you can put this onto a light stand, have somebody hold it, or you can just hold it off to the side. You can use more than one flash also if you wanted to. And then this way you're able to go as fast of a shutter speed that you want up to uh, eight thousandth of a second. So you notice that once you put your camera from two fiftieth of a second all the way up to the top of one three twentieth you can see on your flash here that it says TTL, and when you make that switch, the letters FP come up, and now you're able to get that faster sync speed. Now remember, this works only on these compatible flashes. So what happens if you use a flash that's not compatible? Say, for instance, in my case, I use a Quantum Q flash as my off-camera flash, and it's not going to work. But what happens if I do shoot above 1 250th of a second. I'm going to show you. So here we're looking at a recent family portrait outdoors and guess what? This was shot at a 400th of a second. In other words, the flash wasn't really set too powerful. Just a little bit more than the ambient light and I had it on the light stand a little bit off to the side. And again, this was 1 400th of a second. So what happens if we change the setting to 1 500th of a second like we did here? Well, you can see the vignetting. It's actually on the bottom, a little over a third up, but it's not that dark because of the fill light. So again, our flash wasn't too powerful, just a little bit above the natural light, which made it look very natural instead of being really harsh. And of course, you could tell by the uh, catch lights in the eyes, it was just a little bit off the camera. So it is possible to shoot above 250th of a second using a flash that's not compatible. Now one of the reasons that I like using the Q flash is that I shoot manual and of course I get a lot of flashes out of the turbo battery. But one of the main reasons is that I'm also able to use a quantum radio control system that allows me to shoot many times will hold the light behind the couple or even behind the wall and it fires that way. 
where if we set up some of these compatible flashes and it's not in the line of fire, they may not fire. I have used it that way, but I just prefer personally to use my Quantum. However, I am limited to 2 50th of a second, unless we can put up with the vignetting like you see here. So let's take a look at and see what happens if we set our sync speed above 2 50th of a second. And this is using our studio lights. I'll have a giant softbox on my right, two kickers coming in, one from the left, one from the right up on top. So here we're going to start off. You can see the difference. We're starting at 2 50th of a second. And as we increase the speed, look at that. You can see the vignetting that we start to get. And then shortly afterwards, it'll block out all the light. So this is the result if you're going to be using a flash that's not compatible. Okay, so let's go back to using Nikon's D7200 and Nikon's SB800 Speedlight. And in this particular case, I had it mounted onto the camera's hot shoe and I bounced it off the ceiling. So we're going to get bounce light. And we're going to start off at 2 50th of a second. And watch what happens as we increase our shutter speed. Thousand of a second still looks good. A four thousandth of a second looks awesome. And look at here we're at one eight thousandth of a second. Now that's pretty amazing. So this is something that I thought I'd bring up in case somebody wants to shoot above one two fiftieth of a second. Thank you very much for watching.